Have you ever wanted a capture card that you can take with you when you go hiking that you make sure stays attached to your belt or backpack and is always ready to go for your mountaintop or forest dwelling land streams? I, 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 I don't know what's up with this part of the capture card, but this is my review of the Mira Box HSV323. Uh, it's a USB 3 capture card that has a very hard metal chassis and a carabiner strap kind of setup because why why not do you feel restricted in your streaming setup do you wish that that big mic could come with you or just be smaller less big you know or do you just want something less in your face well we'll throw the mod mic wireless into your setup and experience streaming freedom like never before Use it while you're walking, use it while you're talking, use it while in the world of VR, use it while you're on the toilet during your BRB scene, use it while building a PC. You're not tethered anymore. The Mod Mic Wireless, streaming freedom. I'm gonna go on and take this off so it's not rattling the entire recording because that's probably gonna get really annoying. I'm Abel's Fox, your stream professor, and welcome back to another capture card review. I have reviewed over 100 capture cards at this point on the channel, quite a bit. I review every one I can get my hands on, and we always put them through our paces here. And today we're looking at this one from Mirabox. I've had a lot of requests the past year or so to review more kind of generic or less name brand e capture cards on the market, and Mirabox is one brand that keeps coming up. So this one was recommended to me as a question of will you review it? Went ahead and picked it up. It costs $116 for this bad boy but it has some actual like decent quality and capabilities that most of the sub hundred dollar capture cards have so unlike most of those this one's probably worth buying if you're actually interested in a high quality live stream as mentioned this has this weird metal-ish chassis with this crazy texture on the front you can see here and comes with the carabiner hook i don't know why <laughs> the only situation i can imagine this being useful is if you just want to like hang it under your desk or you need to hang it in a way where your cables are routed that could be useful but overall this just seems like i feel like this product was made for something else and they use the same chassis i i, I don't know you've got two hdmi ports one for input one for output or pass through which allows you lag free playback on a monitor tv what have you you have usb a to a connectivity again which i cannot stand because they always include super short cables and you don't have any longer ones laying around and then on the other side you have a headphone and microphone connection or running your headset into for recording. Specs wise, this is a 1080p 60 through and through capture card. So no 4K pass through, no HDR, no greater than 60 Hertz, no 1440p, anything like that. And in this case, unlike some other capture cards, 1080p re means really just 1080p only. Like there's no scaling. So you can't tell the capture card to scale down to 720p or if you put a lower than 1080p input here, it's still captured at 1080p. There's no, I guess technically that's scaling, but like you have no control over the scaling on this capture card, which is a little strange. So 1080p only, and it does support both MJPEG and YUY2 color encoding. And this matters because MJPEG is literally motion JPEG compression, which is, like the JPEG images. So there's always artifacting, grain, things you don't want in your image that show up in MJPEG, which is what most of the sub $100 capture cards use. And so I've been looking for a capture card under $100 that uses YUI2. So far, I haven't ha found one, but this one's just a little more than 100. YUI2 is completely uncompressed. It's in the 422 color space, which is what most cameras output and mo all that you need for most gameplay scenarios. So this is pretty solid. My, the only quirk is that you must add the audio device as a custom audio device in OBS. However, I'm working with the team to kind of resolve that for a lot of capture cards. So that may not be true in the future. Now, this capture card is plug and play. You don't need any software or drivers for it to work on your computer. You just load up OBS, XSplit, Gamecaster, VMix, Wirecast, whatever. I don't know that it works with VMix. I shouldn't say that. Um, but it's not UVC. So UVC is a class of video drivers that a lot of capture cards use to act as a virtual webcam, which makes them compatible in the Windows 10 camera app, uh, Discord, Skype, video calling app, apps, things like that. This one works in the Windows 10 camera app, but not Zoom or Discord. It shows up in those two, but it's black screen and it doesn't show up in Skype at all, unlike most UVC capture cards. So that's a little weird. But the good thing going for it here is it works in Linux. So Linux gamers, Linux streamers, they keep asking why none of the capture cards support Linux. If you're looking for a Linux capture card, this is the one for you. 
Latency wise, I always test latency rendering to OBS's preview. I'm looking at about 104 milliseconds, which isn't great, but it's better than the past couple cards that we've reviewed, which are 120 and up. So I'll take it. Ideally, you want around 60 milliseconds, but honestly, this is fine. You just may, like if you're running a camera through it specifically, you may have to do some clap testing and then finding the right audio sync to sync up your audio. But for the most part, it will be fine. It's just not the best. Quality wise, it looks great. Since you have YUI 2, it is a completely uncompressed 422 color stream. There's no artifacting. There's no major issues to behold. Testing it in, on the Xbox One X and the PlayStation 4 Pro, both select a 1080p 60 pass through feed. So super sampling for both of them. Get nice high quality gameplay footage. Looks pretty great. Works great with OBS. Will be solid for streaming as well. It gets a little warm, but doesn't overheat or anything like that in my testing. Looks pretty solid. Testing oddball formats and things like that for retro capture and stuff. 1080i works. It seems to already be deinterlaced. De 480i also works. Seems to already be deinterlaced, but is again scaled to 1080p. None of the lower than 1080p formats show up. Like 480p doesn't show up as 480p here. You still only get a 1080p feed. So you'll be at the mercy of whatever scaling happens in here, which may not be the best. So for retro gamers, this is probably not the card to go for, especially since neither 240p works and then the OSSC 2X and 5X modes don't work, and the OSSC 3X and 4X modes don't really work either. They're all flickery. So 480p kind of works, but again, it's just forced to 1080p. So for retro gamers, this is not the card for you. Overall, for 116 bucks, you're getting a 1080p 60 uncompressed capture card that can be great for high quality recordings, live streams. You can use it for a camera feed as long as you're not doing video conferencing. If you want to use video conferencing with it, you'll have to add it to OBS and then use OBS's virtual camera to send it back out. Uh, and solid for recording. This will be great for screen captures, for gameplay, what have you. Pretty solid there, but it is quite limited in what it can do compared to most of the capture cards I'm reviewing on the market today, which have some degree of 4K pass through UVC or they support the retro formats. So if you're a Linux user, this is probably one you want to look at and consider if you have specific just like vanilla game streaming desires. But if uh, comparatively on the market for all the other capture cards I've been reviewing lately, this is kind of a weak buy IMO. I, 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 I'm torn because I've been looking for cheaper options that support YUI 2 or RGB over USB, and this is one such option, but it's so limited in every other thing. Like, unless you're just buying it to play and stream like console or PC games at 1080p 60, there's no flexibility in what it can do. So I'm going to say, like I said, Linux users can get it, but otherwise I would honestly avoid this one. The quality is great. It's fine overall, but it's just not enough on today's market, I don't think. So that's gonna be it for this capture card review, keeping it a little short here, not much to say. Not a great buy, but wanted to cover it. Regardless, hit the like button if you enjoyed. Product links will be in the description down below if you wanna pick it up for yourself. Subscribe for more tech education and stream guides. I'm Vox. I'll see you next time. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. I'm Jeff. Oh, wait. Wrong channel.